Hello everyone, CB160. I'm Jeffrey Ho, and today I would like to present our group's final evaluation of the static process from producing glacial grade acetic acid. I'll first like to thank my group members, Philip Tu, Cody Cheng, and Rosa Zhang, for their extraordinary work when working with me on this project. Since last August, our team has evaluated the economic viability of incorporating a process patented by Static to our company's ethane manufacturing facility. Today, we will first propose our working process, modeled by Aspen, and which was continuously optimized using previously acquired process design heuristics. Then, we will present, uh, present our Aspen results and cost analysis to evaluate the design process's um, estimated profitability and economic feasibility. Finally, we will provide the board our final recommendation on whether our company should implement the static process to produce acetic acid. Currently, our ethane production facility located on the Gulf Coast annually produces 1.18 million metric tons of ethane, which is sold to neighboring petrochemical companies. Recently, our company has considered to incorporate the static process into our petrochemicals complex to produce added value um, petrochemicals instead. The static process uses a metal oxide catalyst supported by zeolites. And while this new catalyst preferably oxidizes ethane to ethylene and acetic acid, unwanted byproducts including carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and water are also simultaneously produced. In particular, carbon monoxide production is very concerning because of the health and environmental threats it imposes. Catalyst composition 1, 13, and 14, each identified in the static process patent, were eliminated from consideration because they produce carbon monoxide. Our group also took account the safety considerations of other chemical species and designed an environmentally friendly, controllable, and safe process accordingly. To propose uh, economically optimal process design, we first selected the static catalyst composition by calculating the economic potential of each design. Fortunately, upon calculation, all the catalyst compositions yielded a positive economic potential ranging from one to $1.7 billion per year. Specifically, we deduced that catalyst compositions that favor acetic acid production over ethylene would yield higher profitability because of the following two reasons. First, the compound annual growth rate of, acetic, of the acetic acid market is much higher than that of ethylene due to the rapid growth of the pharmaceuticals and adhesives market. Second, the ethylene market in, on the Gulf Coast is highly saturated by competitors, including Dow Chemical and Lindo Basil. Ultimately, our team decided to use catalyst composition 11 with a nitrogen inert diluent. Due to the high exothermicity, of the catalyzed reaction, an ethane lean feed stream with a nitrogen dil uh, dilution was selected over an ethane oxygen binary feed stream. Next, I will discuss the specific process selections and our Aspen model results. The following flow diagram is the static process that our team considered to incorporate into our ethane production site. Using this setup, our company would be able to produce 835,000 metric tons of acetic acid, which corresponds to 4.2% of current global demand. The process is divided into three main sections. The gray section is where the static packed bed reactor and the flash drum are located. The liquid phase acetic acid, uh, the reactor effluent stream, is fed leftwards and is purified to glacial grain through a series of extractive distillation columns while the gaseous phase is fed rightwards into an amine scrubber and cryogenic distillation columns for ethane recycling, purging, and waste treatment. I'll further elaborate on the process design decisions. In the gray section, the mixer combines several feed streams to match the operating conditions of the PBR. The reactor feed stream contains the ethane-rich feed stream uh, produced from the existing petrochemicals facility the air feed stream, and the recycled ethane separated using cryogenic distillation columns for the right-hand side. The pack bed reactor contains 246 kilograms of catalyst and is highly exothermic. 
Thus, we separated the PVR into nine identical tubes to meet sufficient surface area requirements for heat transfer. 182 kilograms of steam is produced every second, and we have repurposed um, the steam to decrease our process utilities costs and raise additional revenue through steam credit sales. We chose a flash to separate the reactor effluent stream into liquid and gaseous streams because installing a distillation columns induces additional capital costs for negligible benefits. Purifying acetic acid from water with high recovery rate is extremely difficult as the mixture forms a near azeotrope at a mole fraction approximately 0 0.23. In the red section, acetic acid is separated from water using N-methyl acetamide solvent and extracted distillation columns, each with 18, 25, 25, and 35 columns. Several methods including acetic acid liquid liquid extraction and adsorption were considered or subsequently rejected due to the high operating and working capital costs. And so um, ultimately, by using extracted distillation columns, you can obtain glacial grade acetic acid with minimal loss to the waste stream. In the blue section, we recover ethylene to prevent further oxidation and recycle ethane to increase overall conversion to acetic acid. Distillation column six, is able to achieve the separations of the H2 hydrocarbons with only about a third of the usual number of trays thanks to the cryogenic distillation column immediately upstream. Distillation, five, um, distillation column 5 removes nitrogen oxygen gas from the scrubber effluent such that the separation in distillation column 6 is mostly binary. The mean scrubber uses a 7 to 2 mole ratio of methyl diethanolamide and pepperazine to first reduce product streams um, CO2 contamination, decrease work duty of the subsequent compressor, and lastly, minimize CO2 solidification and accumulation inside distillation column five. With the current setup, the nitrogen perch stream contains small traces of ethane, too little to incinerate, but also too much to release as is. Our team proposes to place an oxidation reactor that contains gallium oxide catalyst to fully convert the potent greenhouse gas into carbon dioxide. Then the carbon dioxide can be captured using nanoparticle adsorption and is ultimately geologically sequestered. Our team proposes to license the carbon capture technology from Savante Technologies, which will cost us $49 per kilogram of CO2 sequestered. Based on these process design decisions, we simulated the process using Aspen software and obtained the following. The model achieves high purity and somewhat high recovery for both acetic acid and ethylene using cryogenic and extracted distillation. Unfortunately, our process generates a lot of liquid waste and carbon emissions, which will be accounted for in our economic analysis later on. The cryogenic distillation columns are very in a very energy intensive operate units. However, we are also hopeful that implementing heat exchangers and generating steam from the impacted reactor will alleviate these energy costs. Next, I would like to present the sizing and pricing of all the relevant equipment to our pro a proposed process. Three of the operating units, our compressor, distillation columns, and our reactors make, about 80, make up around 85% of our base equipment cost. When adding in smaller operation units listed here, our total base equipment cost comes out to be around $146 million. We took a very conservative pricing approach using 316L stainless steel to account for the presence of acetic acid and included extra reactors and distillation columns to account for emergencies and unexpected maintenance. Equipment costs were calculated based on equations found in the CEDAR textbook. And for operation units that were not in the textbook, we made phone inquiries to relevant companies to determine an approximate purchasing cost. Our calculation methodology are also provided in the appendix. And, and to note, this is a study estimate and thus it's prone to around plus or minus 20 to 30% error. Within our process, we also accounted for storage tanks which are placed strategically throughout our system. 
Currently, we have 10 intermediate storage tanks with the following capacities, as well as product storage tanks with the following materials and capacities calculated with a 24 hours residence time. We also include three heat exchangers, which are purpose to decrease utilities costs by preheating or pre-cooling our streams using either steam or cooling water. To estimate the total capital investment, our team assumed a length factor of 5.04 for fluid processing. We also used a length factor of 1.5 specifically for a compressor and catalyst resulting in $503 million for our installed capital costs. The following is a breakdown of our utilities costs which total up to $486 million. Utility co uh, utilities considerations include refrigeration, electricity, wastewater treatment, steam, and cooling water. Refrigeration is our highest utilities cost, and a number of diff uh, differing refrigeration grades were used through our system. A potential solution um, strategy to decrease this cost is to use an outlet stream of distillation column 5 to pre-cool the inlet streams of distillation column 6 since, since this 5 is at a considerably lower temperature than this 6. Texas industrial electricity costs are around $0.08 cents per kilowatt hour. We included a correction factor for our electricity costs to account for the lower efficiency in electricity. Wastewater streams were calculated on a $0.10 cent per gallon basis when used to treat the extracted distillation waste streams containing NMA and acetic acid. We are also able to fully illuminate our steam utilities costs by using steam produced from the excess heat dissipated from our PBR and converting it into stream credits. We found both initial and annual solvent and catalyst quantity to account for miscellaneous processing costs. Initial catalyst costs totaled $200,000, while annual catalyst costs totaled $400,000 per year. Upon market research, our bulk solvent costs, which are mainly on NMA, translate to an initial and annual cost of $5,000 and $3,000 per year, respectively. Since solvent loss and catalyst regeneration are expected over time, the initial cost of both our catalyst and solvents are included in our capital costs, while our annual charge are included in our raw materials costs. We also accounted for our label costs and our working capital costs. Working capital was determined to be around 8.6%, when accounting for both storage and transportation time. A specific, a specific breakdown of our labor costs are included below and totaled to $4.2 million. As color-coded on our diagram, we assumed uh, three process sections with two operators per section. We again took a conservative approach and used a base salary of $40 per hour per operator. Here's a summary of our cost analysis shown in a waterfall diagram. As mentioned before, we took a very conservative pricing approach. However, if we take a more aggressive approach by reducing the both the number of backup PBRs and distillation columns, we can reduce our total equipment costs by $112 million. Lastly, here is a drawn to scale summary of our utilities, labor, and uh, raw materials costs as well. Finally, based on our economic analysis, our team would like to provide the senior management our final recommendation whether we should implement the static process to our petrochemicals complex or not. Using the following assumptions, our team calculated a negative net present value of the static process. Upon a more sophisticated cost analysis, we predict the NPV to further decrease and we attribute this to our conservative equipment cost methodology and our low acetic acid recovery. Of course, the MPV value, uh, the MPV is sensitive to many factors, including investor confidence, strength of economy, and public policies. Thus, we conducted our sensitivity analysis of the MPV based on the aforementioned assumptions. While the MPV is very sensitive to small perturbations in sales price and sales volume, we observe that the capital cost and discount rate don't affect the MPV as much. For a positive MPV, our team also considered relocating the SAVE process from the Gulf Coast to other petrochemical hubs. While evaluating different relocation sites, we considered the following criteria. Each of the criteria weighed based on results obtained from the sensitivity analysis. 
Market nearness was weighted the highest because of its direct contribution to sales volume and sales price. Using this criteria, we evaluated several tentative locations where ethane is widely produced. Our decision tool suggests to relocate the static process to the Netherlands because of its proximity to European nations um, that have high acetic acid demand and also the growing markets in Asia. While Saudi Arabia also ranks high amongst the candidates, its absolute monarchy and higher export taxes to the, uh, to the EU make relocation less desirable compared to the Netherlands. And of course, further investigation is required to pursue this alternative because of the economic and political risks such investment proposes, uh, imposes. So what are some technical improvements our team suggests to make a more profitable process? Well, first, we request the R&D team to look into methods to isolate acetic acid from our NMA waste stream. By doing so, not only will acetic acid recovery, uh, not only will acetic acid recovery, thus the sales quantity will increase, but also our company will be able to achieve circular economy with our solvents, minimizing waste treatment costs. Second, we request the R&D team to improve our extracted distillation columns by using different solvents outside of what our team had previously considered. With better separation, we expect higher sales quantity and lower capital costs. For the engineering team, we request an investigation looking into using an ethane oxygen binary feed stream. While this alternative requires more caution with carbon monoxide and um, with reactor temperature monitoring, if done right, we will be able to significantly reduce the capital costs. Lastly, we suggest the sales team to establish value chains for diluted acetic acid for metal pickling and neutralization applications. I'd like to give a, I would like to provide a recap of our presentation. Our company realizes an opportunity to implement the static process for static acid production. Our team's designed a process that uses cryogenic and extracted distillation to annually produce 835 metric tons of glacial grade acetic acid and high purity ethylene. Unfortunately, due to the high utilities and the installed capital costs, we calculated a negative MPV value. While our company can consider relocating the static process to the Netherlands, as the MPV is very sensitive to sales price and quantity, our team suggests our company not to implement the static process. Before investigating, before further investigating our relocation options and making significant technical improvements to our system, the risks of implementing the static process outweigh the opportunities. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation and we can open the board to questions.